Welcome back to this lecture about task scheduling using cron jobs. In this lecture, we're going to create a small script that is going to output the daytime and the list of the current elements in the current directory to a file. Since the focus of this video is not on creating the script itself, and we did most of the stuff we're going to do in the script here before with the other videos, We'll skip over this script creation pretty quickly and just cover the basic parts that are new. For example, this time we're going to open our file with the A flag instead of R or W, which means append. So each time the file is opened, it is not overwritten, but it is opened and then we can append new lines to it. This is exactly what we want in this case, since we have different times of execution and every time we want to keep the file itself and just append a new line. A new method of the OS library is the getCVD method we're calling here in order to print out the working directory, so the directory the script is currently being executed in, to our console. In order to write the datetime to our file, we want to import a datetime library that is going to give us some easy and simple elements to get the current timestamp. We could do some formatting on that timestamp, but for now we will just keep it as it is and write it to our file as a header. As we've seen before, we always need to append the backslash n in order to start a new line. The next step now is to simply write all of the entities of our current directory that we got from the list directory method we're adding up here right now, and then add all of those to the summary file we will indent it with a tabular and then again add a new line character. At the end of the file we also want to add a new line character to make sure that we get some differentiation between the executions, add some logging and then we can go into our terminal and execute our script to see if it's working, if it's doing what we're going to get out of it from. Execution looks good, so check out the summary.log file and here we can see that we have the files written in here and if we execute it again and again we can see that it adds new elements. So appending to the file works perfectly fine. Since we now finished our script, let's take a look at crontab, which is the main element we're going to talk about here. As described in the video before, cron jobs can be quite difficult to understand in the beginning because they have these five elements to take care of here. By using a star for all of the five elements, we're telling cron to start our script every minute of each day. Whatever comes after the five elements is the script that is going to be executed. In our case, we want the cron session to move into our scripts folder. So we will do cd and then the full qualified path into our scripts folder. And I'll add the slash scripts element here into this path in order to make sure that everything works correctly. And by using this double ampersand, we can then append another command here. So in this case, we want to execute Python 3 and call our Python system scheduler file. You can also direct the output to some file, but we remove that here. And this 2 ampersand greater than log.txt will output all the error messages to a log.txt file in the current directory we're in. So in this case, a scripts folder. This is really handy and useful to debug cron sessions, so we'll use that here. After closing the file, we can see that it says that cron job is set up, and if we wait for a minute here, we can then see that we get some output into our actual folder. The log.txt file tells us that the operation is not permitted, and this is a problem that is present on macOS. So let's go to the system preferences and then security and privacy and scroll down to the full disk access here. After authentication, we can then add a new element, which will be the cron executable. The path we need to find here is hidden, so let's press Command, Shift and G to get this window and then go to slash user sbin and then get the cron executable. You can look that up online if you cannot understand how to do that exactly, but it's quite easy actually. So once we've done that, we can remove the log file and Already we can see that there is this summary.log file. So it seems as if cron has already executed our stuff here again. Let's wait for another minute in order to see if everything is working correctly. Giving the cron executable full disk access can be very dangerous. So make sure to understand or try to understand what is going on here and what implications this can have. All right, so let's check our 
summary.log file again and see if there is some updated values and now here you can see that it now has all the values printed to the file. Let's go back to our script and see what we did here. So the important parts that are new are the always.get current working directory, the current timestamp using datetime.datetime.now and all the other stuff is basically already done in the past. The important part is this cron element. And again, we used five stars in order to make sure that our scripts execute every minute and then we cd so we change directory of the session into our folder. As an addition, we redirected the error output of our system to the log.txt file. Cron jobs can be set up on any Unix-based system, so for example Linux and macOS. Let's see how we can use Python for scheduling in the next lecture.